Hello everybody, welcome. This is Mr. Maestas and today I would like to talk with you about a two proportion Z test. Now in this video, I'm just gonna go over one example of a two proportion Z test and maybe talk about a few things that are kind of tricky with a, Z, a two prop Z test that are different than a one prop Z test. So here is my uh, problem here in a recent poll of 24 randomly selected males and 47 randomly selected females, 14 males said they watched the Super Bowl for the football game. And only 11 from females said that they watched the Super Bowl for the football game. Um, this is the exact same problem as I had in my previous video, which was about confidence intervals. So different question this time. Does this provide evidence that the male students tend to watch the Super Bowl really for the football game more than the female students do? So what, we're, what this comes down to is, do, is the percent of males that watch the Super Bowl for the football game greater than the percent of females that watch the Super Bowl for the football game. So that is what it comes down to. That is our alternate hypothesis. So you guys were like, why did he pause there for a second? It's okay. doesn't matter. Okay, here we go. Here is our null. So what is our null hypothesis? Our null hypothesis is that they were equal. If there was no change, if there's no difference between males and females, we would expect that the proportion of males that watch the Super Bowl for the football game is equal to the proportion of females that watch the football game for the football game. And our alternative hypothesis would be that the proportion of males is greater than the proportion of females. Now this way to write it is, is intuitive, I think. They're either equal or one is greater than the other. Now it could be possible if you're doing it, it could be less than or it could be not equal. In this case, it's greater than because I wanna know if they in fact watch the football game for the football game more than the female students. Now, alternatively, if you look at other books, these are written different ways. They could also be written as PM minus PF is equal to zero. There is no difference. And this is kind of important because we'll get back to that in a little bit when we do our mechanics and we want to know the z-score. We can also write this as PM minus PF e uh, oops, equals is greater than zero. Now remember, we were uh, when we did our confidence intervals, we were talking about the difference in proportions. So in this case, it would be appropriate for me to write them as the difference is equal to zero. If the difference is equal to theirs, there is no difference. If the difference is greater than zero, then that means the males are greater than the females, the percentage, proportion, okay? So in order to do this hypothesis test, we're gonna state the same conditions as we did for our confidence interval. And when we did that, these are the conditions that we came up with. First, we have a randomly selected students in each group, so both groups have to be randomly selected, stated in the problem. Number two, each group must be less than 10% of the population. So 24 is less than 10% of all male students, 47 is less than 10% of all female students. We're, you know, we're assuming that there are more than 240 and 470 uh, female and male students. Both groups must be independent of one another, independent, independent, I don't know what that means, independent. Okay, let's write it independent of the other group. Basically, we can't have anybody in the same group, okay? Um, all, in this case, it's easy, males, females. So the fourth one is also very important. You must show that there are a, a number of successes and failures that are greater than or equal to 10, so um, that the sample sizes are large enough. In this case, I don't have to actually multiply n times p hat because I already know what the number of successes are. There are 14 because that's how many males watch the Super Bowl for the football game. So 14 is greater than or equal to 10. 10 is greater than or equal to 10. 11, 36, this is the same information as my previous video on the confidence intervals. So that stays the same. What we wanna do, and we wanna make sure we do this for the AP exam credit, is we wanna say what tests we will use after we do our conditions. So based on our conditions and our hypothesis, we are gonna use a two proportion Z test. All right, so now we come to the nitty gritty, the mathematics. What do we do for our mechanics? 
Well, first you're gonna need to find the P hat and, and P hat for both the males and females. I've already done this here for you. This again is the same as what we did on the confidence interval video. Same here, we find the difference, okay? Here comes the work. What are we trying to do? We need to find, just like the last time with one prop Z test, we need to find a Z score and a P value. That is what's gonna tell us either to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Well, so what is that Z score? Well, that Z score is going to be our, um, our hypothesized value or the value that we're kind of looking for and we're gonna compare that to our null hypothesized value. So we're, we're really concerned about the difference, right? So our uh, sample difference, really is what I'm talking about, our sample difference is PM minus PF hat. Okay, this is kind of what we're, what we're looking for. And we're gonna compare that to our hypothesized value of PM minus P half, which is zero. So we're gonna subtract zero divided by our standard deviation. Well, you know what? We're not, we don't really have a, a true proportion, a true difference to deal with to find a standard deviation like we did last time. So the best thing we have is our, uh, our sample. So this is gonna be what we call the standard error of P, um, and it's, it's a C, and I'll talk about what the C is, P hat C minus P, uh, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna do it like this, okay? And I'll tell you what C me, what is right now. Basically, what this standard error is, you know, we have this null hypothesis, which is which is what we base everything on while we're doing our hypothesis test. We're basing, remember, innocent until proven guilty. So we're assuming that the null is true. So our standard error has to be based on our null being true. Well, if our null were true, then the diff there would be no difference in uh, proportions of females that male and males that watch the Super Bowl for the football game. Well, there clearly is you know a bit of a difference. And when we do our standard error, we want to try to get as close as possible to, 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 to you know, maybe saying that this was true. Um, and the way we do that is we used what's called a pooled standard error. Okay, so what that basically means is it's really not that hard, guys. This is what we're going to do. We have to first find uh, the, the pooled proportion. All right, so here's how we do it. Here's how we do the pooled proportion. And the pool proportion is denoted by P hat C. And all that is is the number of successes in the first one plus the number of successes in the second one divided by the total number of, of people. Basically, think of it this way. It's the total number of uh, students that liked the Super Bowl for the football game divided by the total number of students. So we're really just looking for like the total number of students, males and females, that watch the Super Bowl for the football game. All right, so let's let's go and calculate that out. So I calculate it out, and that becomes my pooled proportion, which I'm going to use in my standard error formula. So my stand, sorry, I got to scroll down here. My standard area formula is just like I did before. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to instead of using my p hat and q hat, I'm going to use p c hat and p and QC hat, okay? So I'm still gonna do it over, okay, two one times one minus 0 0.03521 divided by the number of uh, people in group one, which was 24, plus, and I'm gonna have 3521 times one minus 0.3521 over 47. So this is just like our confidence interval, except remember in our confidence interval, we used uh, P male hat, Q male hat, P female hat, Q female hat. This one, we're not doing that. We're using our pooled per percentage in here, okay? So we're gonna calculate that. We're gonna use that for our Z-score, okay? So allow me to do that. So I'm gonna get 0.1198, okay? I did that magic in the calculator. So I'm gonna get my Z-score here is gonna be the difference between these two, which is, I calculated it right here already. So 0 0.349 minus zero, 
over my standard error that was pulled that I just got, 0.1198, and I'm gonna find that out. Okay, that gives me a z-score of 2.913. All right, so then I'm looking for the probability of z greater than 2.913, which is my p-value. So I'm looking for my p-value, so I'm gonna normal CDF that bad boy, and I'm gonna get 0 0.00, 179 for my p-value okay that's a pretty small p-value so what this is saying is that um, this is the the probability that I get that sample that I just did um, if in fact my null hypothesis was true which is pretty small right so let's I'm gonna just double check this in my calculator I'm gonna use a TI inspire real quick so if you want to go to your TI inspire um, here's my TI inspire and I'm gonna do menu statistics stat test and I'm gonna do a two prop Z test okay, that's what we're doing a two prop Z test and I'm gonna put in all the information that I have the number of successes for my males and the number of successes for my females 14 out of 24 men uh, male students and 11 out of 47 female students now my alternative hypothesis was that my males were greater than my female proportion so p1 greater than p2 and i hit okay and all kinds of stuff comes out of this so let's see we have z value of 2.914 what did i have z value of 2.91 oh right on well you know this but that's pretty close close enough right um and i have a p value of 0 0.00177 and is that what I had? I did in fact have it about that. So uh, we're pretty good. It says I'm fine. So last thing I have to do is state my conclusion. Here we go, guys. Conclusion. And I like to just type out my conclusion. It's uh, a little, little nicer to do that. So what is my conclusion? What am I stating? Well, you know what? It's exactly the same as my one prop Z test. I'm basing it on my P value. So since my P value of 0 0.00179 is much smaller than any al basic alpha level. You know, we'll really go with 0 0.05. That's what we normally go with, okay? So my p-value is so small, I will reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence that suggests the proportion of male students that watch the Super Bowl for the football game is greater than the proportion of female students that watch the Super Bowl for the football game. All right, boom, that is it. So we just did a full on two prop Z test. All right, so um, make sure that for the AP exam, you have all of these parts. All right, the hypothesis, the conditions, the mechanics. Now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it right there so that if you want, you can screenshot it and keep it for yourself. All right? Okay, guys, that's it. We will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.